Hi guys, welcome back to Taylor Talks Trades. In this week's episode, we are with Mark Hamilton from Colorado Construction. We're talking about his journey into being a quantity surveyor, the West Lothian Construction Forum, and the industry in general. I hope you enjoy. Hi Mark, welcome to Taylor Talks Trades. I'll start where I always start. <laughs> How did you get into the trades? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that or start that way, and, and obviously I'm not actually a tradesperson. So, yeah. Uh, so I've I'm quantity surveyor to background. Yeah. And uh, so I suppose I've been a main contractor's quantity surveyor all of my career. So mm -hmm. sort of in the corporate world, not not on the tools at all. Yeah. So uh, I. Then not worry, we'll let you. I, I know. I so, <laughs> but I mean, it's great what what you do in terms of focusing on on trades. Uh, side of things and how people grow businesses yeah. from from being on the tool. So, uh, but no, I've I've spent my career in the in the corporate side. Uh, so I uh, I'm from the Highlands. I was I was uh, brought up in, in Fort William. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Fort William, the usual careers talk and construction. Just I don't know. It just uh, what's that? Or, or quantity surveying it was. What's yeah. that? And I actually got a week's experience with a local contractor, and that piqued an interest. So. I was trying to get to quantity surveying uh, at university, yeah. but managed to fail my higher English three times, uh, oh. twice, uh, three times. So I've got two O grade Englishes I could sell you, but uh, <laughs> uh, so I didn't make it to uh, Aberdeen uni. to do mm -hmm. uni, to mm -hmm. do quantity surveying at uni. So I ended up doing an H and D in building right. at Napier. Yep. So I uh, I went to. Uh, Napier College. I graduated from Napier Polytechnic, but now if I just say Napier, folk think I've been to university. Ah, so. great but I went, I went, came down to Edinburgh, left school, came down to Edinburgh, did an HND in building, uh, and uh, off the back of that, myself and, and a couple of classmates, we, we got jobs with Balfour Beatty, the ah, pretty, right. pretty big main contractor. Yeah. So I, I, I was trained up as a quantity surveyor, a, a contracting quantity surveyor, on, working on, on sites all around Edinburgh. Uh, mostly the east of Scotland uh, for Balfour Beatty. So I was with yeah. them for 13 and a half years, just wow. working through the grades. Uh, great, great people. That must have been a good education. Yeah, yeah. They, really, they really give you, you know, proper training, proper uh, organisation, yep. sort of teach you how to go about things. Yeah, uh, so it was really good. So it was, uh, I was working on, uh, if you know the old GPO building at the the east side of Princess Street, yep. just where at the top of Waverley Steps, yeah. uh, just the other side of the bridge. So I was working there and we'd done the facade retention for, a, for it was about 18 months, fantastic job, you know, demolish the building, retain, yeah. retain the facade. And they were about to start the next phase of building the offices behind. Mm -hmm. And so by that time I was a senior surveyor, but there was somebody even more senior than me on the site and I was going to be there for two, three years on the one job. Right, yeah. And I thought, and at the time, uh, I got uh, a colleague uh, who I went to college with says, why don't you come and join? Uh, oh, so I went to a smaller organisation. And, yeah. and that was a good move, actually, because you got, I got the training with Balfour BT and I went to a smaller company mm -hmm. and, and you're right away I was sort of doing managing surveyor, if yeah. you like. So looking after a, a yeah. team for the first time. Uh, properly, that would, that would have been quite good for them to probably get your experience but, and but, coming from that kind of background. Yeah, and and the people who were in that business, uh, some of them uh, started and and are in Colorado, so yeah. there, there's a bit of a a, good. a full circle. But yeah. uh, no, it was good. Uh, it was a small building and engineering company, so so it was uh, short, sharp contracts. It yep. was it was. No, two, three years on yeah, the one job. Yeah, no, on one job. So, and, and you were meeting lots of people, lots of consultants in, in Edinburgh and, and yeah. in Glasgow with, with, a, with a turnover of jobs. Uh, it was a good education for me because you got closer to... Mm -hmm. Balfour Beatty, you knew everything about the commercial side of a site, yeah. and a single site. Yeah. So working with... Uh, it was Duke Construction, DW, Duke Construction. Mm -hmm. uh, so working with them, I got... To know more about the business side of things, yeah. And, and was and it like so, so small, or sh short, smaller. sharp stuff? Yeah. It, it can sometimes be more difficult. By the yeah. time the site's set up, you're maybe coming yeah. back over it. So it, it it was good, but that business, due to issues in London, it, it was a UK wide business. Mm -hmm. There's still the Dupich Mastic who do bridges and things that are oh, still right. on the go. That name's still on the go. Yeah. But 
due to I think we'll believe uh, issues in London and, and, and Channel Islands, the, the, the company folded. So right. the management team from Jew, we ended up going and setting up the Edinburgh office for Rock Building. Right. I don't know if you remember that no, name. I don't think so. So no. Rock Rock Building was an interesting. It was, they were from the southwest of England, and they were. Uh, I quite liked what they were trying to do. So they were they were trying to take over the world, but they were. So they were contract work was was limited to sort of four or five million. Mm -hmm. Non, non, uh, or, or fairly no D and B, no you know, no high risk projects, yep. and a big maintenance. You know, they were doing mm -hmm. insurance work right on up and down the UK. Yep. So it was quite a good model. So they were doing the contracting side for the cash, uh -huh. and they were doing the maintenance for for you know uh, slightly more gross profit. Yeah. But they were on a massive growth spurt. Right through 06, 07, 08, yeah. and of course yeah. 08, 09 ha hit. So yeah. they, they just basically ran out of cash, oh, basically. Wow. So, uh, but before that happened, I'd sort of seen that rock was going to go one or two ways. It was either going to fall over or it was going to get past the yeah. recession yeah. and really go on to do yeah. great things. So I, I decided uh, when that big recession was on its way, I went to, to work with an ex Balfour Beat colleague at Morgan Sindel. Uh, Quite yep. a big company. Yep. Uh, through through they were based in Paisley and now at Eurocentral. Mm -hmm. So I had six years with them. Wow. That was really good sort of framework. Uh what doing a good schools. Yeah. yeah, I was doing schools and ended up in the pre construction team. So that was the first time I sort of moved from purely commercial. Yeah. So, you know, in, in my previous uh roles I was a site QS and yep. then moving on to managing QS and eventually became a commercial manager or director mm -hmm. and then when I went to Morgan Sindel I worked on a framework team and then became a sort of pre-construction uh, for their hub you know hub Scotland yeah well, a lot of public work more schools yep. lots of schools health centres so that was quite good that was quite interesting and then a s slight change again I, I, I moved to uh, Heart Builders uh, over in Trenent yep. so really strong in social housing yeah uh, you know they, they they probably part of the Cruden Group, so the Cruden Group probably not many people know, but they probably build the most houses and flats in Scotland. Oh, really? Uh, more than more than the the, the private companies, mm. uh, just sheer volume. Uh, but because a lot it's of it's in the social housing, most, so because a lot of it's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, ah, you that's don't get so much. I mean, Cruden Cruden do houses for sale as well. Yeah, yeah. And then I had a year freelancing and uh, just trying that out and. When I was freelancing, I met up with Gary Gibson, the, the joint MD of of Colorado, yeah. who was previously in due, and he says, yeah. oh, "We've got something you could help us with." So I helped them with a, an issue, uh, and after about a year, we just made it permanent, and I became a director with Colorado Construction. That's that was brilliant. so. That was a year freelance, and now four yeah. years, just just past four years uh, as a, an employee. That's so brilliant. Uh, yeah, due construction. So it's, 20 million a year, uh, civils and, and, yeah. and a, I say not large building projects, but we've done the odd yeah. large one. We, we're very client focused. So Depends if, what if, your class is large. I, guess. I suppose <laughs> that's, that's very true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, most of our projects are sort of two to three million, yeah. uh, no more than a year. Yeah. Uh, but we've done the odd one. I mean, we were in the palace of uh, Holyrood House yeah. in Edinburgh. We were in there for three years, and Whoa. that was that was ten million in the end. Yeah. So you know, we and we do we manage contracts on behalf yeah. of some of our clients. So some of their bigger projects, some of the distillery installations or expansions. Yeah. Sometimes we we use a form of contract where we just provide advice. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the contract doesn't come through our books. Right. But, okay. But. We're fully yeah. involved helping the clients. So. Just because you've got that wealthy experience, yeah. the actual, yeah. the contractual stuff, and probably yeah. the 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 QS side yeah. of it as well. No, so that's a whistle stop through my ah, thir no, near thirty five yeah, years now. That's good. So. so did you say then that you? How did you hear about the quantity surveyor kind of position? It was. Then? It was. Was that uh, a clear fair type idea? No, it was. No? It was just through uh, discussions with the, the school. I can't remember exactly how it was, but there, there was. Discussions in in uh, with the careers officer about yep. different types of di yeah. different types of uh, courses. I probably yep. was at different universities, yep. I, and I think I think uh, and it was just somebody. It came along that there was a, an offer of a placement yeah. with a builder. Yeah. 
So I went along and did a bit of work with them and that gave me a bit more knowledge. Yeah. So that week's experience, mm -hmm. uh, which is something we've done ourselves mm -hmm. and, and, and obviously the, there's quite a focus on trying to give uh, you know, young people, yeah, some some well, that's experience what I was thinking. on site. I always try and join the dots yeah. with people. Like, I mean, I've got guests, so I'm kind of listening. Yeah. And I'm going like, like, the, was there that person there for you that's went? Look, you could be a QS, and this so is what, how you could get into it. And I guess that's kind of um, maybe kind of skipping forward a wee bit, but obviously. Um, you're part of the West Lothian Construction yes. Forum yeah. and we're really, um, I've recently become chairman there and yeah. we're looking to really drive this forward and try and get into the schools and get yeah. the next, the future generation in and, and, and seeing it. And I was just wondering if that was maybe, you know, you were almost given back yeah. that opportunity. I mean, my, my family's not in construction and yeah. there wasn't somebody close, you know, because yeah. sometimes you have somebody yeah, in the family and then yeah. you think I'll, I'll follow on yeah. with that. But I didn't have that, but... The, work, the week's experience obviously triggered enough for me to, yeah. to research what the options were yeah. at, at university. Yeah. And when I was going for Aberdeen, as I said earlier, I, I applied to Napier as, yeah. a, as a fallback. Yeah. And that's what I ended up doing. Yeah. Uh, but to, through, you know, work, I've worked with, you know, obviously Balfour BT, Morgan Sindel, yeah. uh, even the Cruden Group, you know, they're, they're quite big organisations. Yeah. So they, they have a focus on... Uh, and sometimes it's a lot of public work. So uh -huh. when you do public works, quite often you have community benefits as part of yep. your contract. Yeah. And that could be school visits. It could be yep. careers advice. It could be uh, uh, work experience. Yeah. So, and when I came into Colorado, uh, the guys were doing some of that. Mm -hmm. I, and it was happening anyway. And some of our employees have come into the company that way. Yeah. Uh, so with me being the pre-construction director mm -hmm. in the office, I'm, I'm the one tied to the computer most yeah. of the day, everybody yeah. else is running about. So a lot of these types of things sort of gravitate towards me because yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm there and and, uh, and and it sort of dovetails with other stuff I'm dealing yeah. with, you know, a bit of HR no, it's and a good. Bit, I, bit of pre-construction. I think you've shown quite a commitment to it and a passion and I'm, I like that and, and I think we just need more people like that. Yeah, and, and, I mean, and, and you know, it's... yeah. We're, we're all totally aware of like how bad this co kind of skills gap is or this sh can, like shortage but like i just keep saying well all you can do is try and make it better Absolutely. like by by no going to schools or no taking an interest in any of it then nothing's going to change yeah. if we at least try then i believe that we maybe get the tide to turn a wee bit at Definitely. some point but um in terms of this sort of quantity surveying then that you you then trained up to do is that like, what does that kind of entail for somebody? Like, if there's maybe because this might go into the school, school, yeah, school sometimes get some of these. So, like, what, like, would that be a pathway you'd be saying, like, that's a good way to get in and do the similar kind of career uh, that you've had? And definitely, because construction industry is a great industry. Yeah, you know, it's it's ten percent of the economy and you know ten mm -hmm. percent of the workforce, but a lot of people don't quite realise that, and that goes for all of the trades uh, through into all the all the various professional roles yeah. as well. But it's a hard industry, you know, mm -hmm. you, it, it's quite unforgiving. So the way I describe it is uh, if somebody's made a career in construction, then then they're good at what they do. Yeah. Because if if they're shy of hard work, they don't like it and they'll move on. Absolutely. If they're not very good, it's quite a brutal industry. And, yep. and <laughs> you, you know, again, you'll end up moving on. So yep. when you stick it, it's because normally you're good at it. Yeah. And it's quite a tough industry you know the, yep. the thing that construction companies have to do to make not a lot of profit compared yeah, yeah. to other other no, industries right. you know and and it can go wrong quite easily mm -hmm. so a uh, lot of variables a lot, a, lot of, a lot exactly and 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 no two jobs are the same which is part of the attraction of yep. there's no two days are the same yeah, yeah. and if you've got a number of projects they'll all have they'll all be different mm -hmm. and if they're only lasting six months a year then yep. you've always got new people new projects new new deadlines so that makes the industry Exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but quite coming back to quantity surveying, uh, I mean, I I would say it's been it's been good to me. I, I had uh, I've had even though I've had more moves than I ever thought I would. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've I've everywhere I've been, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Whilst I've been there, I've enjoyed it seems the like companies. You were, everywhere you went, you were there for quite a while as well. Yeah, so you must have. There was like a wee period you, where it was about three year yeah, gaps. Well, but you I must mean, have done quite a good job, yeah. like you say. If you're going to survive in construction, there's no much margin for error, no, really. Like if no. you're 
making mistakes and companies are losing money, you're kind of moving on. That's absolutely. probably the way. Yeah. So absolutely. But, but you must have done all right. It, you'll be the same everywhere you've been. You've met fantastic people. Yeah. Fantastic teams. Yep. You know, and and I and I always say that people in construction, people who are good in construction, they they would be almost superstars in other industries yep. because you know they've got drive they've got yeah. communication skills they're problem solvers no, absolutely. Uh, they, you know they 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 certainly uh and then most of them are not not shy of hard work as yeah. well so i think that's one of the main ones you've kind of got to be willing to work hard because it's fast paced yeah. as well and even whether that's like you're a roofer out on the tools That's or right. you're, you're, you're a QS in the office. Everything's moving quick. There's loads of moving yeah. parts. It's, it's a real challenge, but yeah. it's, it's good. Like it's, I Absolutely. think that's what brings that sort of, do you know, it, it keeps you really, really busy. And at times you you're, you can be drowning in it and I think, know. how are we going to get through this? But then once you get through it, that's the bit where you're like, oh, well, we've actually done that. Yeah. Like you feel that sense of achievement. And I think that's, um, it is a great industry to be involved in. And like, like you said, there's just so many new faces. You get to yeah. meet all different clients, all different team yeah. mates. Like there's there's so much good things about it. And the weather, I guess, if you're outside, the weather yeah. can be challenging. But also, it's amazing in the summer. Yeah. Right? Do you well, know, it's like but it's it's the chance to be outdoors, and it's just it is a a real place where it's no two days yeah. are are really the same. Of course, being being a being a quantity severe, you get a hard time for. Being office bound and yeah. if it's raining, we don't go yeah, out. But somebody's got to do it, <laughs> hey? Like got, some somebody's got to do their roles, and, and and I think that's it. I think it's probably it, it's it as kind of us trying to reach um, the future generation and, and saying, look, this is what this role can bring, and then yeah. like, well, you're like a, you're a um, construction director now, aren't you? So it's like yeah. that's you know I, 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 you might start in one place, correct, but. It, it could go anywhere. That's and to be honest, like you were saying, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's like if you're good, like you're good, like somebody will just. Ah. I think you'd be good over in this position. Well, yeah. well, well, you know, you'll get a chance to upskill. You'll mm. get a chance to get promoted. Absolutely. Like if you apply yourself in construction, I think you can really do really Absolutely. well. And it's and most of it's attitude. And there's always opportunity. There's always yeah. that you know. Even though the, I mean, I, I was quite. I could say I was quite lucky. So I came out college in, in 1989 mm -hmm. and started a training program with Balfour Beatty and there yeah. was a, a fairly short recession in 1990 right uh, and that I was guess, the year I was born ah, well there you go I'm, sure, I'm, showing my age. I'm showing my <laughs> age I, so I'm going there was a recession then well I, but, I can't remember that but there was a lot of people being laid off uh, even though it was quite a short recession yeah. but there was a lot of people that, but the the directors at the time at Balfour Beatty must have made the decision to protect the trainees. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, could have been, you're not, you're not, you're not contributing that much yet. Yeah. No, Your cost uh, will let you go. So, the, you know, the reason I mention that is, is you know, construction does, it is going up and down. It mm -hmm. does go up and down. So, yep. uh, you know, obviously we had the, the major recession in, in 08, 09. Mm -hmm connected to the finance uh, and a lot of people and, and every time there's a recession people find other jobs so yep. you can imagine the roofer who gets himself a, a warehouse job yep. or something when there, when there's a downturn Absolutely. and then they've got a choice when, they, when there's the upturn I'm quite happy what I'm doing mm -hmm. in, in my current job whatever yep. it might be I want to go back to going on the roofs yeah, uh, know. you know so there's always that that there's different events where we're the skills that we do have, those people yeah. might leave the industry. And, and it's, it's these dips, we lose so many then, yeah. and then you don't quite recover, and then it maybe happens again yeah. a wee bit, and you lose so many. And it's, I think we're, there is a statistic, I don't know off behind, but it's like we're definitely losing like five to everyone that's coming in or something yeah. like that in the UK, apparently. So the other, the other you one can that feel I, that as well. Uh, the other one that I think is noticeable, that, uh, again, I don't know the exact statistic, uh, you'll be able to Google it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But the average age of a construction worker, I think, is is into the fifties. Yeah, yeah. And I, so and, you know, as, you a, can, as an aging workforce. Yeah. Yes. So you can see that we're struggling now. Something. Yeah. You know, when it gets busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the heat's come out of the market a wee bit, which is sort of making things better. Mm -hmm. But uh, w when it gets busy again, uh, as each busy period as the years go yeah. on. If we have too many folk retiring or, or leaving the industry, then we are going to mm -hmm. 
we're going to It's quite to, scary what could happen. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is quite scary. It'd be interesting to see how it Because a lot of people out. probably look at construction and think, oh, certain things can be a bit of a shambles at times, and you're thinking, mm-hmm. well, it could, it could be a lot worse, do you know? Um, but I think, I, I think as well, there does seem to be a lot of people trying to make it better. Like I've noticed, yeah. I've noticed that. Like um, obviously, like seeing yourself on the forum and things like that, and like you start to kind of, you don't need to look too far to see a good kind of yeah. number of people that are trying yeah. to make things better. And like it, it's got to at some point, Tom. Like it's got to because uh, you know it's. I don't. I think it is. I think most companies are. I think, Mind, that, I think, yeah, mindful that they need to do something yeah. to keep young people I think, coming in. I think that's where, like, for me with the forum, I want to just yeah. try and establish, like, what we do, like, what, what we can do, and then get that to, like, other yeah. people to say, like, here's how you can help, and, look, this is what we're doing, and if we do more of it, it might help, and, and, and hopefully through that, that, that we can we can do more of that, because there is a lot of people that sit in the wings and kind of go, oh, well, I'd maybe go in and visit ah. a school, but nobody's really approached ah. me, and I'm not quite sure how to do it, or whatever, and I'm not saying that just gone in and doing a couple of school visits a year is just the answer either, but it's part of the, it's part of it's part it, of the yeah. bigger picture. But, but it's the networking as well, because yeah. the, the, uh, the reason I approached West Lothian Chamber of Commerce, because mm-hmm. I've done stuff in Edinburgh before, yeah. uh, was just to try and make more connections. So, yeah. so we're a fairly small local business mm-hmm. in, in, in Livingston. We don't have departments like the big, yeah. the big companies, so, you know, most of us in our team are wearing different hats and mm-hmm. things. So, and it, it wasn't just about about uh, the next generation. It was it was for different business advice yeah. as well. So through West Lothian Chamber of Commerce, mm-hmm. Business Gateway, uh, we're members of the Federation of Small Builders. Yeah. So we're, we're sort of members of these things, but not actually engaging fully mm-hmm. and maybe not using the benefits yeah. fully. Yeah. So we reached out to the chamber and pretty quickly they put me on the construction forum. Yeah. <laughs> Just at the time it was it was leaderless yeah. uh, and I think it was only construction business on it. But, you know, it's great that you've yeah. come on board and, and with that fresh enthusiasm and, and, and fairly quickly it's now, you know, it's got a, it's got a a, a bit of a plan and a yeah. direction so no that's it and I think we can only build on that as well like that it, that's it and uh, uh, there's there's elements of like you mentioned like community benefits and things yeah. like that and businesses will always need to go and do these things yeah. for community benefits but I see guys like yourself on that forum and I'm like I know it's deeper than that yeah. Like you like you want to see people come into construction. You want yeah. people to see the, yeah. the good side of it and have the opportunities that you've probably well, had. They're, and, they're not contractual know. obligations yeah. for us. It's, That's it's, it. It's, That's and, it. And when we have brought, when we had a, we had a labourer working with us, yep. and somebody spotted. I don't know why he's a labourer, and he's yeah. now one of our up and coming agents. That's uh, good. We had somebody uh, employed through an agency as a translator. We're now we're now got her in our business and yeah. training her up to be a health and safety officer yeah, so brilliant. so uh, we, the opportunity and our, one of our QS's came for work experience and yeah. we ended up keeping him and, and, and training on he's one of our our, no, our, really our, our, our QS team so uh, it can you know, happen the, in so many different ways I, and I think the networking bit will help because yeah. a lot of companies are interested in doing it but maybe don't know how to go about it yeah. or just a day job yeah makes it difficult to go and do the research and yeah. make the connections but things like the the chamber and the the, the, the uh, construction forum yep. once we get going we can probably make information available uh, that absolutely. makes it easier for people think, to do I think that's it I think it's it's just trying to like many minds are kind of greater than just one yeah. you know it's just yeah. kind of bouncing things off each other and I think the I think the forum is going to go into quite an exciting space in, yeah. uh, in, um, in 2024 just on the basis that we've been trying to find our feet. Yeah. But once we do that, and ah. then we get nailed down the things that, here's what we'll do throughout the year, just as a, that's how many school visits we'll do, that's how many. Yeah. But then the next bit will probably be, how do we all get together and really share some yeah. like problems and then try and find solutions yeah. and sort of share best, best practice. And I'm quite excited about that. It'll, um, be, it'll be good for, you know, there's 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 Skills Development Scotland and... and uh, W-I, DYW, uh, D- DYW. Yep. Yep. you know, so there's, there's organisations out there doing great work. Yeah, the Business Gateway, you know, trying to do what they can just for young folk, the and they're just with everybody, and they're just looking, all, they're looking yep. to make connections with yeah. the construction industry. So yep. the forum will be able to and help. And you just with that. never, you just never know, like what's going to happen as well. Like we've got a lad now who's came and done a wee bit of work experience with us. He's actually doing a 
I think he's doing like a pre-apprenticeship course at uh, West Lothian College, but there's yep. no guarantee an apprenticeship yeah. at the end of yeah. that. But um, on his days when he's not been there, he's asked us for some work experience and he's came in and it turns out, I actually know his dad. His dad was like, his, his dad's a roofer to trade. He's sort of in a more commercial setting yeah. now in the roofing industry. But he uh, was my tradesman. And then now he's like, look, I've, I've been watching what you've been doing over the yeah. years, um, and he, and he said, "Look, I'd love for like my son to come in and learn off of you, and like yeah. sort of take a bit of enthusiasm for the trade and go and try and like because you know, I've seen that like we try and get our guys to apply themselves so they maybe go in for like the competitions yeah. and things like that. And just if you're going to be in the industry, like have a good yeah. go at it, kind yeah, of thing. You absolutely. know, don't you just turn up, get your wage, and away you go. It's I always try and get them to have that wee bit more involvement. So it's like it just, that just shows you the power yeah. of like networking, but but just just life in general that one day I'm sat in a van with this guy as my tradesman and now his son's going to be yeah, yeah, I'm employing his son do you know <laughs> and, and, and we'll we'll, we'll um, very very likely give him an apprenticeship I think uh -huh. we're going to be speaking to him over the next couple of weeks and then um, he, he'll probably yeah, come on great. board with us so he might have done that pre-apprenticeship course with the college yeah. and I think there's only a percentage of them going to actually get actual yeah. jobs like if that didn't work out, he might have needed to end up somewhere else and not be in construction. Ah. So, like, I'm quite happy that, you know, that that's one we can pull in again. And um, no, and you good. just don't know where they're going to come from. Uh, well, you know, the thing is, though, that these preparation courses, because there's a few different organisations doing different things, yeah. you know, ready for work and, yeah. and different things. I mean, they, they, they take a part of the gamble away from starting. You know, if you were taking, if you take five school leavers, yeah. not all of them are going to take to, exactly. to, 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 working life yeah uh, i mean we had one apprenticeship and he's taking a break from his apprenticeship because i just think he started a bit young but yeah but we've, we've supported him and he's still within the business and he'll go back to it yeah uh, but you know the, these preparation courses mean that somebody's got used to going to college yeah. four or five days a week uh you, you know the, the, the chap you're talking like about it. asking for experience yeah. so you know Right, we've got somebody who's yep. who's who's up for it, so yeah. that that's part of the. Like we, we, we can train them on anything yeah. if they come with the right attitude. We can make a space. I you think know? attitude's massive. Yeah, I really do. I, I think um, you're just seeing so many different variances of of um, probably young people yeah. coming through now. But there's ones that if they're going out their way to come to you, yeah. you know that they're quite yeah, keen. And absolutely. then when they maybe start, it's like, they're not saying like, oh, can somebody pick me up? How do I get? They're just like, they're there. Ah. And that's the ones I usually notice. Like they've maybe got a bus in or something. And we're like, look, by the way, we can get one of the guys to just come and pick you pick up in the morning up. and go back. And then they're like, oh, really? That's great. But like, these ones are kind of a wee bit of a level ahead where they're yeah. like, it's my duty to get there. And they're, so I know that we're hearing a lot of talk of like, the generation is changing, but there's still no, there's, there's still plenty absolutely. in there. They just need a bit of guidance into no. what they need to do and and and, 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 and and find themselves. But I think certainly for me, like I like I came out of school, um I didn't have any qualifications really. Do you know? You mentioned the kind of um, <laughs> feeling the English exam the higher. It's like I I, I think um, I can't even remember what my grade yeah. was in, 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 yeah. in the standard grade, but it wasn't very good anyway. And you know, I just, I knew I was going to be yeah. hands-on. And my dad was a, a builder. Yeah. He did like the yeah. concrete floors and, and finishing and stuff like that. And I, I just kind of knew, I was yeah. like, I'm going to be hands-on. School just, it wasn't the environment that yeah. I, I learned in. But um, when I- no, when I, I was a bit of a halfway house. I could, yeah. I could cope with it, but and, I wasn't and you know a high what, achiever. The crazy thing is now, I love studying now. Right. Like I really enjoy, yeah. like, you know, I, I don't mind a classroom yeah. setting. I'll go to lots of different kind of personal yeah. development things. I'll. I'll study things inside out, like anything yeah. I need to learn, I'll, I'll learn yeah. about, I'll, I'll, I'll go and find the experts for the thing I need to know and I'll, I'll really, so it was just, it was just school, just, ah, it, it just didn't it, quite suit yeah. me, so to come I out of that, find an apprenticeship and then similar to like what you were saying, um, I was kind of partway through my apprenticeship when the, like the 08 crash happened, yeah. so our company kind of went down but they managed, they, they, they almost started up again as pretty much as another yeah. company, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I got kept on, which was lucky, but a lot of people lost yeah, their apprenticeships yeah. there and they're not there anymore, they're not in Absolutely. the industry. But like to get to the end of that, which was, in honesty, quite a topsy-turvy yeah, kind yeah. of four-year journey, to just be like, I'm good at something now. Like there's a bit of paper that says, do you know, yeah. in our society, that, that is quite important. It does. It so does having matter. that bit of qualification to just say, well, there's my first exam yeah. that I've got through and I've yeah. passed and... Now they trust me. I go out on my own jobs and all that. It's like that feeling's quite. It can be quite uh, amazing. It can be just maturity as well. Yeah. You know, especially in when you look at the results of of uh, males and females. You know, yeah. the, 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 
females definitely do better at school because they apply themselves better. I mean, yeah. I know it's a stereotype, but, no, but, I get it. I think. but you know, that doesn't mean that, that somebody who, who maybe struggled or didn't enjoy school yep. can't, can't go on yeah. and progress and, and find something to do. And like you say, go back to, to, to education. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. And I, I, th I think as well, it's it, like, there's a lot of times as well, people will be like, oh, if you've not done really well at school, get a trade. Yeah. But I think it's like, well, if you've done good at school, get a trade. Uh, we, we've done we it need to it. try and do that. We need to try and get it to the, be where we are. The chap we took on who yeah. was a labourer, he, he's now been supported to go through, uh, get a degree. That's brilliant. Uh, as, that's you know, really good. As, as part, that, of, part of being a manager. That's the that's where, that's the life-changing stuff. Because yeah. yeah. that, that, that chap probably would never have expected yeah. that he would be able to have a degree. And that's what the construction industry yeah. can do. Yeah. Like that is that, like if we're trying to say yeah. it, this is it. Do you know? It's like yeah. that is what can happen. There are opportunities. Somebody can go for being I'll never really amount to very much. I'll, I'm yeah. just gonna end up having a bit of a dead end job to now I've got a qualification, yeah. now I can maybe go back to uni, I can go to college, I can learn. I, mean, like, I, I, I think so back much. to I think back to uh, you know, Bar for Beat times, but you know, when they were doing big projects, yeah. the guys who organised and ran the sites or some of them are the, the 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 cleverest people you would come across. Yeah. But they wouldn't have a qualification yeah. to their name and and wouldn't be academic in the slightest. Yeah. But they have they have organisational skills. They have communication it's skills. Their life experience. Yeah, experience. Like, like th some yeah. of the guys in the trades, yeah. like do you know? And and as much as sometimes we can get a bit of bad rap for like <laughs> being a bit rough and ready or whatever, do you know? It's like some of the some yeah. of the stories and just the experience you yeah. you hear for guys in yeah. the and and the trade is is really amazing, yeah. and and it, it just kind of gives you a different perspective on life. Definitely. But I think there's a real thing around. It's maybe just a team thing in general because I like coach like the the kids football team and yeah. stuff like. That. I've been involved in quite a lot of teams in different kind of areas yeah. over the years, and there's just something about team like when when do you know somebody's given you an opportunity you take it you do well and then they sort of almost re like recognise you for it yeah. and say oh that was really well done yeah. and like. You can't really beat that, and I think construction's amazing for yeah. that. Um, and and maybe that's because that's all, all that I know. But it does seem to be that do you know there's like if if you, if you're keen and you're interested, like people are willing to share. Oh, definitely, people want to see and you help, doing well yeah. and, 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 and and push yeah. you on. And there's there's nothing better than that. And and, and I think um, and that bring that might come in with the forum with a bit of peer support and yeah. peer peer encouragement. Yeah. Well, f f for me, like I, I wanted to have you on the podcast because I think you've been a standout in the forum. Like you're putting the you're putting the work in. You want to make a change. You're getting out there and trying to make it happen. Yeah. So, do you know straight away like that's probably me seeing that as well. The forum is going to be one of my teams as such. Yeah. So I'm like right. I want to celebrate all the wins and I want yeah. to try anything that you do that's good for construction. I want to share that and and, and I want to do that with anybody that yeah. joins the forum because yeah. that's. Ultimately, we're, as humans, that's probably what we're Absolutely. driven by a wee bit. Is that yeah. wee bit of, ah, oh, I did a good job, <laughs> do you know? Because in construction, <laughs> as you'll yeah. know, no really, you didn't get yeah. that many pats uh, on the back. You've just you know. got to guess if it was right or wrong. And sometimes it might be a profit and loss sheet or something that tells you whether <laughs> you were right or wrong. And, do you know, there's just a, a lot to it. But, um, but no, I was, I was saying earlier, there's other people, I mean, in the forum, when, you, when I first went into the forum, it was mostly educators yeah. uh, and some of their support functions yep. within within the council uh we're all doing great things and yeah. trying to do trying to make a difference mm -hmm. uh so i think you know i think what we can do as an industry is try and support them yeah. and provide some opportunities uh where we can absolutely uh, and it, it can, it, as you say it can make a difference i for, think a lot, individuals. Of things, a lot of great things are already there and happening mm. just not everyone knows about them correct I so it's it, it really how to access them I, like that's where I, I like to look at the, the things that's on offer see if we can utilise it if we can utilise it then we can get a success story and say like even just as an example so we've got a young lad um, the way that I usually we we work our sort of um, young ones who come in if they're, if they're looking for an apprenticeship so we met this lad at Armadale Academy um, like careers fair kind yeah. of um, meet, meet the employer night it was or yeah. one yeah. of these yeah. events yeah I did and one recently in yeah, Almond yeah. yeah that's right I, um, so so um, we met we met two lads actually and they were asking about oh, how do we get into roofing or solar because we had the solar company there yeah. as well and um, we, we kind of told them how we worked things and that and then right okay and then they said right well keep in touch 
And I think at that time we maybe never heard anything straight away. I think they were looking for an apprenticeship, but then it came round and I said, look, we're looking for somebody, but this is how we work it. Basically, you need to come in, you do like six months with us, go through the winter, which this chapel yeah, has done. Yeah. If you're still there and you're turning up, you're enjoying yeah. it, you're keen to get involved and learn, yeah. and you're going to be a hand to the guys that you're working with, um, and that your attitude's spot on, then we'll send you to college sort of next year. Yeah. And that's how we started doing it, because we had the, the issue where, like you said, maybe somebody's just left school, 16 year old goes the first two weeks of being a roofer mm. at college then they come back and that's the first time ever being yeah. on site and they're like oh i don't really like roofing and then nah, they leave nah. and they go i want to be this sort of and everybody's that. had invested and time and effort that. And, and i don't think that's their fault either no no because i got really annoyed when that happened in the yeah. early days because we are a small company and yeah it's you know, just small tight-knit family run and do you know you're when you make that investment yeah. in an apprentice, it's a big deal, especially back then when that was at the beginning when it was happening. And um, so we just, you learn from it and you yeah. go, well, let's get them in. And it's almost like a, a bit of an extended work experience. And some of these guys turn around and go, I don't want to go to college. Like, I don't want to go back to that school-like school, environment. Yeah. And I'll kind of explain to them, look, it's no really totally like school. It's a bit different, but this is what it's like. And sometimes these guys, they maybe want like a, you can do like an NVQ level yeah. two in roofing. Yeah. So it's like most like on-site assessment. Yeah. We've got like the training rigs and stuff in, in, in our uh, yard. So we can give them a bit of training there. They mm. can get training on site. They can get assessed. So there's like more than one yeah. way to do it Absolutely. as well. But I think I think um, the traditional route is sort of going to the college and doing the four-year apprenticeship and getting that kind of qualification at the end, I think that means a lot to a lot of people, yeah. right? And that's the reason yeah. they want it. So they kind and, of want to... And certainly employers look for that because yeah. that means there's ev evidence that... There's evidence that they've kind yeah, of... Yeah, definitely. Whereas I've seen, I've seen some that's went through it and the evidence has been... <laughs> <laughs> they maybe didn't need the day as well, but um, it, it's like anything. It's a numbers yeah. game. But, but, but that, again, we were talking about the preparation courses and I think they help yeah. people yeah. decide if they could stick college. I think so. I think... Um, I think like school's good in the sense that like if you're doing CDT or something like yeah. that, or you're maybe yeah. even do you know you're maybe yeah, if you get an aptitude for yeah. for working yeah. with your hands, yeah. yeah, it's it's like, but it's it's just uh, it's not quite the same. It's not yeah. maybe outdoors and it's, yeah. it's do you know so there's there's, there's differences, but I, I think. Um, I think there's just like an endless amount of work that can be done, but you've just got to kind of take one yeah. small step at a time, Absolutely. really. And I think that's all we can really continue to do is just, you know, through the forum and through our yeah. own businesses. Making connections, else, making just, networks, just making out opportunities there. available. Yeah. Even just even just having a wee bit of a ripple effect through West Lothian to say, look, there's a forum here, a group Absolutely. of people that's want to make something Absolutely. happen. If you want to join it, come, come and join it and, and, yeah. and help us do it together. It's like... There's a, bit, a sense of pride in that. Absolutely. Like, I, like I want, like I, I want to. I, I, although I'm quite young, it's like so. I've maybe seen myself being in the industry for quite a while. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> I want to fix it selfishly for myself, yeah. obviously. But on the other side of that, it's like I didn't want to have just, you know, been a roofer, started my own business, then employed people, but then just kind of that was it. Yeah. No having. I didn't want to be see the people that's getting spoke about now that never done something like 10, 20 years yeah. ago and they should have put these roofing academies in then or these training academies or they should have done yeah. them careers events then. I didn't want to be those guys. I want to be in sort of 10, 20 years times people going, this is in a good state ah. and it's because of guys like Jamie and Mark who did something then and that changed it. So you can only try, I guess. I know. But, but um, you were asking earlier about, uh, you know, is it changing and is there enough people trying to make it change? But mm -hmm. It probably does need to be a bit of strategic thinking at the government level as well, because yep. I think because we, you know, you can two, go two ways. There's 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 young folk in apprentice colleges and yep. doing, doing apprenticeships in the colleges, etc. Yep. And maybe they can come out and look for jobs, yeah. or you can find somebody, and then you put them yeah. to you know get them an apprenticeship and put them to the college. Yep. But we we've sometimes we've identified a young person and decided we were going to give them a start with the business. Yeah. And we've had, we've ended up employing them mm -hmm. before we can find a college place for them. Right. Okay. So, the, the, you know, we need a massive growth in numbers, but yeah. I'm not convinced the apprenticeship structure has right. the capacity yeah. yet. Uh, now, I, don't get me wrong, you know, if you wanted to make an explosion in apprentice numbers, it's a massive investment. Yeah. But, but there's definitely constraints for the yeah. industry in terms of finding finding these new people and training yeah. them up. So. I think I think there's quite there's a few different things because where where have we've found maybe 
like if there's a if there's a young keen person comes to us and wants to be a roofer, yeah. then like we usually take them and figure the rest out later uh, on. That's usually the way if yeah. we can. But and we pro- did the same. We've got pro- two, three guys that started yeah. with us. We, we had to just employ them as labourers yeah. until yeah. until the problem a place that, came the available. Problem that we're finding is like you mentioned the average age of the uh, uh, um, tradesmen being up. Yeah. And yeah. what we're finding is it's like we can't just keep bringing apprentices in because we've not quite got nah. enough people there to train them. Train, not, not enough so, mentors. And, and, and that's it. And it's like, like when we look at um, a, another issue is probably like people within our business being promoted. So coming off the tools, they're yeah. now, yeah. they're now um, yeah. no training guys yeah. because they're actually in a different role, which is yeah. right for their career and yeah. right for their personal development. But, it then leaves a void. So it's like, gap for you. So, so, so like we're in quite a, a, a sticky position where it's like, do you know, I'm running the business now, so I can't be out on site training yeah. them. And, yeah. it, and that's painful because like you want to be, but you can't fix two problems at once almost. <laughs> so there's there's probably just a multitude of different things, but this is where I think the forum and similar things, yeah. just just construction, people getting together. Sharing and knowledge because, just keep, it, yeah. Keep, can he, what's the problems? What's the, yeah. what, what's the potential solutions? And just chipping away and bit by bit just getting Absolutely. through it. Absolutely. And even West Lothian College being on the forum and, and yep. some of the high schools yeah. represented, it just helps the likes of myself trying to, uh, you know, see where we've got opportunities within our yeah. business speak to the right people about yep. how, how to find people yeah, if we absolutely. don't identify them ourselves. So networking that can absolutely. help, definitely. And definitely. moving forward, what's the what's the plans for you then? Well, personally or call, Just call on, to be honest. Uh, so we're, we're keeping an eye on the market. So obviously there's, there's things happening, you know, we're talking about ups and downs. Yeah. So the housing market slowed off quite a bit. Mm-hmm. We're obviously keeping an eye on that, see if that's bleeding out into the, the general uh, construction market yeah. uh, uh, sector. And, and it's quite difficult to keep your, to, to sort of to tell what, 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 yeah. to exactly tell what direction of travel we're going in so we're, we're sort of we're slightly soft in terms of workload right now so yeah. but part of that is we've got really strong order book of because we get involved with projects quite early with yeah. clients and trying to help them and, and part of the reason we've got a bit of capacity just now is just projects have slipped and yeah just you know they all have a different story they all have a different reason yeah, or yeah. why it's been hard to get it to site so typical construction with with a bit of famine and feast so we're, we're slightly lean at the moment but we expect uh, through the course of 2024 to to be right up there to to full capacity and and possibly even uh, taking people on yeah. uh, into next year and into 2025 because we do a lot of our work in the whiskey sector and yep. the whiskey sector still got huge demands yeah. on 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 the product for growth and if you're if you're expanding your facilities to make more whiskey yeah. whiskey you have to lay yeah. it down for three years so you need I think more a lot of people got a good taste for the whiskey yeah, so you, need, <laughs> you need to you need to and the, the numbers in the subcontinent as well uh, uh global south rather yeah uh, you know there's still a good demand so you need to lay it down so you yep. need more shed so our 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 uh forward workload in the whiskey sector uh is quite strong so when that when that when those projects in terms of unwind from their pre-construction phase yep. and go to site we'll, we'll be at f- uh, full speed again yeah. so we're just trying to keep an eye on the market uh, we're also trying to make sure we're diversifying because we're, we're a lot of our work is repeat work from from clients you know yep. you hear that a lot you know you get yeah. a client look after them and they they reward you with with further work uh, uh, you know so that does tend to mean you, f- you follow a client and you become focused yeah. on that sector. Yeah. So we always have to be mindful to make sure we've got other sectors on the go and we're, no, we're sense. working to make sure we've got plenty of work in other, in other things. So no, the, the, the company's uh, just gone through its, its 17th year, two, two, 2006 the company started. So wow. it's getting a bit more mature. Uh, and, and like I say, we've got a good strong order yeah. book uh, like you said, if you've been going for a long time in construction, whether maybe personally <laughs> or as a company, as a then company, you're doing something you're doing, right if you've yeah. been there 17 years. No, that's great. Thanks yeah. for coming on, mate. No, I appreciate I it, it. And I Thanks. look forward to catching up with you on the construction on the forum. forum and doing some more good work. Thanks, yeah, mate. Thanks very much. Good man. Okay, thank you.